Welcome back to Freight Waves Now on this Wednesday morning. It's time to catch up with Max Farrell from WordCount talking about what's going on in the world of driver retention right now. Max, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Great to have you as always. And last time we talked, we had Katie Love on. She kind of talked about the 2021 roundup, what's going on with all of y'all's data. And today we're going to get into a little bit about critical comment themes about people who are making the choice to either stay with or leave their existing company. Yeah, we uh, what we saw as we looked into our data is that there's about 16% of the comments that are, are critical, meaning somebody's talking about I'm going to leave or quit or, or some sort of red flag um, indicator that's saying, hey, as a company, you really need to be on top of this issue. Otherwise, you're going to be looking at an empty truck. And as we uh, we looked at the data, we saw that there's um, you know, across the dozen different standardized themes that we have, uh, a few top themes that stand out. So pay, logistics, communication, equipment, and, and people were the top five uh, critical comment themes uh, that were out there. And so like you think about pay, in 2021, we made a bunch of pay increases across the industry. It's going to continue into 2022 as, uh, as we see inflation and just a really competitive job market across all industries. Um, but with pay, it wasn't always about an amount. It was about people not understanding their pay or feeling like their, their pay was incorrect. And so really, um, like the critical comments around pay were that a driver was saying, hey, I, my trust is broken here because this pay is really confusing. And so those are the sorts of things where often a lot of these things, uh, when it comes to critical comments, it's, it's a communication issue. Uh, and, uh, and companies understanding what are people really wanting here? Or where is the miscommunication gap? If, if they can plug that quicker, good things can happen. And Max, were there any other areas that were really common themes that you saw? And I think we might have a graphic or a chart that we can throw up as well um, that you had from this study or this report. Yeah. So as, as you can see in this uh, report, what, what we're looking at here is looking at what percentage of people or drivers that, that shared comments about a particular theme are still with the company uh, or are still with the company at the end of 2021. And so if you see at the top, 47% uh, of people that shared comments about training uh, on WorkHound in 2021 are no longer with the company at the end of the year. Whereas on the flip side, you've got benefits where nearly 73% of people that shared a comment about benefits stayed with the company at, at the end of the year. So, of course, the thing that we'll all gravitate towards is, uh, is that feedback at the top uh, around training and seeing that, yeah, okay, nearly 50% of people that left a comment about training aren't with their company anymore. That really leads to indicate that training's a, a really important theme that we should pay closer attention to as an industry, especially as we're trying to figure out that next generation of the workforce that, that's going to keep the supply chain moving. And so, Max, I think when we get feedback a lot, whether that be in our industry perspective or just, you know, feedback in general as humans, we tend to focus a lot on the negative and say, OK, where where can we go to improvement? But we don't focus a lot on what are we doing really, really well. And that benefits one, that thing that's all the way at the bottom is something that mm -hmm. the industry does do well. And when people offer good benefits, then people talk about it. And that's really attractive to recruiting. And that's a really great way of retention as well. So can you talk a little bit of advice to the companies who maybe don't have the flexibility in boosting those salaries or boosting those pay, but they do have the flexibility in boosting benefits and boosting how people talk about those benefits and how that can be kind of just as attractive as better pay? Yeah. So I think all of us is in the modern workforce, we're getting more savvy as far as like what is the total package of, of a job. And I think historically in this industry, uh, the cents per mile was always the attractive thing. What is that rate? But the devil's in the details. Like how many miles are you actually expected to get over the course of that week? How are those miles actually paid out? And so the benefits is certainly part of that package. Now, historically, of course, the table stakes benefits were medical, dental, vision. But, you know, I'm fortunate we work with some really innovative companies across North America. And some of them are, are saying, how do we stand out by having this, this really significant package of benefits beyond just the table stakes. So how do we start to meet people where they are, um, providing things around mental health or family planning, which are these things that are really important to, uh, to, to people in, in the workforce, but often don't get talked about. And so it's, it's companies saying, what, what are people really struggling with or, or 
missing out on opportunities uh, in, in their personal lives where we can help meet them where they are and, and really provide a layer of value that is rare to see elsewhere in the industry. And Max, were there any trends um, that you've seen over the age demographics? I know when I first entered the workforce, I wasn't the most responsible, and I didn't really care about benefits going to the doctors and things like that, but maybe there were some other benefits I did care about. Did you see any of that, or are you anticipating any shifts as newer drivers or newer folks enter the workforce now? Yeah, the, as, as far as um, age and, and the desires of different generations, uh, what we're seeing across the board is that people that are my generation, the millennials or, or Gen Z or whatever the, the generations are after that, um, it, it's a demand for flexibility. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's a big thing that the companies have to, to factor in. So what companies are, are starting to do like in trucking, for example, instead of saying, you know, this is an OTR job, you need to be on the road for four weeks straight, otherwise take it or leave it, people are voting with their feet. They're saying, okay, we'll leave it. So companies are rethinking what does the, the job look like for this next generation of, of a driver? And it's offering more flexibility. So companies are, instead of operating in silos between recruiting and operations and sales, that team is coming together hand in hand to figure out what are the things that we need to, to offer to not only attract people, but reliably service this freight without disappointing our customers. And so you are seeing more of the uh, of the, the regional model, the hub and spoke, where companies are figuring out ways to get people home um, daily, multiple times a week, and just rerouting their freight networks accordingly to meet people where they are, uh, just because that, those are the challenges of, uh, of the workforce today. I think that there is this common misconception going around right now from these established companies that the Zillennial generation, I'll call myself that because I'm like right on the edge of that millennial and Gen Z generation, that they're afraid of hard work or they don't want to get their hands dirty or they don't don't want to commit to a company and work hard for them and stay in a job for 50 years and then retire, you know. But that, that misconception kind of falls on the heels of the fact that people coming into the workforce now or maybe coming out of their first job and entering into their first career have this expectation that they're not going to be walked over and that they're going to be able to provide feedback and see this continuous loop now from their employer of getting that feedback and taking it into some real change because they know that they have the power to get up and walk. Do you think that yeah. trucking companies are now getting this understanding as they're seeing those younger drivers enter the workforce and now taking that understanding into some actual powerful change instead of just saying, you know, we offer a pizza Friday for our drivers when they come home, you know, and making it truly actionable and attractive. Yeah. The, you know, I, one of the laziest things that I think we do as a society is, is generalize generations, you know, because they're, they're lazy boomers out there. They're lazy millennials. There's incredibly hardworking millennials and, and Gen Z people. I mean, there's people in Gen Z that have made more money than, than any of us that are in this conversation today. Um, uh, that's just the reality that generations are incredibly diverse. There are going to be some lazy people. Um, but if, if we're going to generalize, then yes, the, the, the next generation of, of workers out there are looking for feedback. They are looking for a collaboration instead of just um, it being a one way street. And I think that's where um, we as, as people uh, are right now. You know, if you think about COVID over the past couple of years, We've all gotten gut punches. We're all fundamentally changed because of the, the challenges that we dealt with. And so we do have to operate with more empathy now just because of, of where we've been as a society over the past couple of years. And that's what this, this generation's grown up on. So we do have to take the time to, to hear people out um, and, and factor in feedback as, as part of a company strategy. Otherwise, other companies are gonna do it and you're gonna be wondering why you got empty trucks. Max, one of the things I really love that you guys do over at WorkHound is really go to the drivers, the people in the trenches that are really a lot of times overlooked. So appreciate you doing that. Um, one of the things that's really interesting, of course, with this job market, we get job openings reports. I think it's at 10 a.m. this morning. Um, this is a different job market. And so mm -hmm. now the onus is really going to be, hey, the employer, employees have a lot of power and a lot of say-so. Do you see any of this momentum stopping or anything of, of a shift if there's a pendulum swing when, hey, maybe it's now it's an employer's market and there aren't as many job openings about? Um, I mean, it, it happens. We, we've certainly seen that historically with recessions where the, the, the labor market demands shift. Um, but what we're seeing a, a lot of times in, in this, this tight labor market right now is 
a really tight demand on skilled labor. So company trucking companies, for example, they they really are all clamoring over the the same small pool of, of experienced people. Um, and so part of it is is the fight to get people that do have that experience, do have a CDL, um, have that six to 12 months of, of safe driving. Um, but then you look at, uh, um, there is a large pool of people that are, are wanting to go from maybe unspecialized um, too specialized. And, and that's the pool that does take just training dedication. And that's across all industries. Uh, so someone that may be coming out of college with raw skills or coming out of high school, um, dedicating time to training them up is, is going to be a, a big thing. And it's either going to fall on companies to, uh, to bring in the next generation of, uh, of professionals to their team. It's going to fall on community college and other vocational programs uh, really, it's that that's a reality. It's that we got to groom the, the next generation of our workforce one way or another. Max, thank you so much for being with us today. Always great to have you guys from WorkCount. So to Katie, you guys are right down the street from us. We got to get you in studio sometime. You come, I, I would love to come see you guys in person. Y'all come by too. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Max. We'll talk to you again soon. See y'all.